Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for a free Linux-based VPS in the cloud, go to skysilk.com. No strings attached. Just awesome stuff. Let's conclude this testimonial part, the submission of the form by defining everything in PHP, handling the data, sanitizing and storing into our custom post type. So if you remember in the previous lesson, we were successfully submitting our fetch post request to the backend of WordPress and we were passing these three parameters as a post request, as a form data post request, the name, email and message, and the action was dealt by WordPress. So now we need to sanitize the name, email and message data before storing into our custom post type. Let's do it. First, let's delete these comments. It's fine. I remember what to do. So let's define a variable called name and the name can be sanitized thanks to a method, a built-in method of WordPress. WordPress is pretty good in sanitizing stuff and allows the user to, or the developer, to use built-in methods in order to simplify all these shenanigans. Let's tap a built-in method called sanitize underscore text underscore field because that's what's happening. The name that it's coming from a post request so as a PHP developer you should know that dollar underscore post all uppercase will have you the ability will give you the ability to tap the post request that we're sending with a fetch so post name sanitizing the text field because the name is a text field let's duplicate this and let's change the name variable into email but the email is not a text field is an email so we should actually sanitize the email and WordPress gives us this super handy method called Sanitize email, isn't that fantastic? The last thing that we need to sanitize is the message. So once again, duplicate the line, let's check the email here and change it into variable message and sanitize the post request message. But of course it's not an email sanitization and it's not even a text field sanitization. This is a text area. So yes, you guessed it. Once again, WordPress has the text area underscore field that allows us to sanitize this field. If you're wondering how I know all these things, basically there's a page in the documentation of WordPress, which is linked below in the description of this video, where you can check all the different sanitization methods, functions and types that you can tap in WordPress in order to safely store your data and sanitize your data, it doesn't matter what type of data you're handling. So let's be sure to check the link in order to learn more. Now that we have our three input fields submitted by the user, we can store everything inside an array because that's how we save that data inside our custom post type. And if you don't remember, in the testimonial controller, just scroll all the way down, and this is gonna give some headaches to someone, to the method called save meta box. This is the method that we're using in testimonial custom post type to save that unique values, the unique meta attributes that we have in our testimonial custom post type. And at the bottom here, we have this array that contains the name, email, approved, and featured that stores everything that it's inside that specific post type, and it stores these four valued unique values inside one single key. We did that because we don't want to have four different keys per post type because every time there's a new post or a testimonial post we're gonna have an extra key and we didn't want to have four extra keys per post and just because we're here look at that like here I did a mistake I forgot that this is a email sanitization so I just use a text field sorry about that but we can copy this data array and we can paste it here inside our submit testimonial Ajax request and of course we need to delete all this stuff because this is not happening. So here, of course, in the name, we need to pass the name variable, easy peasy. In the email, we need to pass the email variable and the approved and future, they should both be zero because we don't wanna automatically approve a new testimonial that is submitted by the user and we certainly don't wanna future an unapproved testimonial inside our front page. So. Let's define both to default as a zero. Now we need to define another array, and in this case the array is a list of arguments in order to prepare all that data in order to be stored inside a new custom post type, in our case the testimonial post type. So we need to define this array, that's how WordPress works. Unfortunately it's an array inside another array with so many arrays, but 
that's kind of like PHP. It's just a bunch of arrays. No, it's not true, but let's define all the argument. The first argument is the post underscore title and the post title can be whatever you want. I want to give it a name, something like testimonial from, uh, and I can concatenate this with the actual name of the user. So I know immediately based on the title who wrote this testimonial. And then we can specify the post underscore content and the post content is equal to the message because that's the description. I don't want to have another custom field inside the post type for the message. It's just the content of this post type. Then set up the post author that of course we don't want to register the user that submitted the testimonial, but let's assign this post author to one that is the usually is the default user generated by WordPress. It's always the admin. So let's assign this testimonial to the admin as a post author. This is not going to affect anything in our front end or back end. It's just that WordPress needs a post author when you store a new post or page or whatever other thing. Then we can define the post status to published if we want, or you can put it as a draft or you can put it as however you want, but published it's fine. Then we need to define which post type in which post type we want to store this. And of course, let's remember the unique name of our custom post type that in our case or in my case is testimonial. And then finally, we can specify and pass all these custom attributes, name, email, approved and featured as a meta key. So let's say that's meta input of this testimonial post type should have once again another array and inside this array we need to specify the key that we saw before is the underscore alicad underscore testimonial underscore key or whatever name you specified for yourself and then this testimonial key it's equal to the data array that we defined before with all our information. Wonderful. Now it's finally time to save this post and save it in our database, in our WordPress database and store in our testimonial custom post type. To do that, we need to use a method, a built-in method of WordPress called WP insert underscore post. And here we can pass the full array of arguments with our args variable. This method returns a value, returns always an integer, or returns the ID of the new post generated, or returns zero if it cannot generate a post. So let's store these into a post ID variable. And thanks to this method, we can do a check because if these return zero, it means a new post wasn't generated. So it means something went wrong and uh, our script cannot save whatever we want to save. So we can do a simple check. So if the dollar post ID and with PHP and the new version of PHP with PHP seven, if you're running PHP five, probably this won't work. Well, with PHP seven, if this variable is anything but zero or null or empty or false, this is gonna be through. So this means that if this post ID is one, two, three, four, a hundred, a thousand, or even uh, the name or something like, I don't know, the name of the post, this is gonna be true. If this variable is zero, like it could happen if this method fails, this is gonna be false, so something else will happen. So this is the success return. So we can say that define a variable, and this variable is once again an array, and we can say that in this array we have a bunch of keys. So the key status is gonna be equal to success, and then we can pass if we want the ID of the post that we just generated. So let's say the post ID is this variable post. Perfect. And now because we define this return array, we can return these as a JSON return post request as a JSON return to our Ajax that is expecting a JSON body. So let's use a built in method of WordPress called WP underscore send underscore JSON. And inside here, let's specify this return variable that we just defined. And because we don't want to continue the execution of the script, let's remember to put another WP die in here. If this is not true, so this is not happening, let's define a similar type of response here, but with a status of error. So here we don't need to pass the post ID because we don't have it. This is like the error return. And here we can say simply return a status of error. 
and of course again WP send the JSON of these variable or if you don't want to define the variable you can put directly these array inside this return but I feel like this is cleaner and easier to understand and update especially because we have this variable that is consistent with both success and error response perfect now we did everything that we had to do in our PHP let's complete the form.js here because on response here we're not dealing with the response whatsoever nothing is happening so let's say that in the response we can check first if the response is identical, so three equals one, two, and three all together. My font ligature shows this super fancy three line symbol. If the response is equal to zero, that means something went wrong with WordPress and WordPress is returning zero, so it's not tapping that action. Or the response status, it's identical to error, which that's the thing that we're sending. We're sending the status inside the response array. Let's tap these testimonial form and let's select once again that class that it's called js underscore form underscore error oh actually this is not underscore but it's a dash that's the name of the class and we can check the content form here just to be sure js form error yes that's the name of the class perfect and here once again add the class list show and semicolon at the end and we can return because we don't want to continue the execution of the script and this is just dealing with the error if anything different from zero or the status error is returned that means that our submission was successful and we can simply return the success so let's say that this here testimonial form query selector js form success that's the class that we have here when everything went smoothly and we can add the show before concluding though let's remember that after the user submits its form all the data that he has inside the form so all these gibberish here needs to be cleared because we don't want the user to keep like clicking submit a thousand times and submitting the same stuff over and over again we need to clear the form if we have a positive response so if we store the data so first let's check if the data gets stored properly so let's refresh this page and let's see let's add something like for example jack and test at test.com and this is my test message and let's try this submit message successfully submitted thank you the form is still all there but if we access our backend of wordpress in the testimonial custom post type and we refresh look what we have here we have the author name jack with the email that we put the testimonial form from jack that is the title we define and inside here this is the content this is my test message and all our meta keys and meta values are here approved and future it's set to zero fantastic but once again all this form is still here so if the user clicks once again submits once again if we check we have another another submission of jack so this is super bad like we don't want to do that so we need a method in order to clear this form in order to just like give it a blank page and remove the ability for the user to keep clicking on or even accidentally clicking on the submit button multiple times while it's already filled so let's do it before concluding this tutorial and let's do something like that say that once again the testimonial form we should tap all those variable that we have here and we already actually have here so let's say let's copy all this stuff let's copy these query selector name email and message value let's paste them here and instead of simply specifying the value we can say that these three values should be equal to empty so we are manually setting those values to empty values so name email and message perfect if we go back in our front end we refresh and we try something else like matt matt at test.com and this is matt hello <laughs> something like that submit boom message successfully submitted thank you but the form is completely empty because it was cleared but still in our testimonial custom post type if we refresh this page ta-da we have the testimonial from matt fantastic that's pretty much it for this video thank you guys for watching and i talk to you in the next one